rather lovely sunny afternoon and uh, I'm walking along the Taff Trail just north of Radda. Um, Taff is to over there and this path is full of joggers, walkers, cyclists. Every now and again I have to dip out from filming because uh, someone else is coming past me. It is certainly a well used place. What a lot of people don't know is this used to be a tramway. So just down from where I'm standing here, there was a tin plate works that opened called Mellon Griffiths Tin Plate Works and it opened in 1750. It was right on the Glamorganshire Canal and shipped everything in and out by the canal. But they built a tramway from that tin plate works up to Penturk Ironworks, about five or six miles upstream from where we are here. So the tramway opened in 1815 and it was horse drawn. It was a typical sort of plate type tramway of the L-shaped variety with uh, stone sets as sleepers. And it ran from here right up to Penturk, so about four or five miles upstream from here where it served uh, the big ironworks up there, there was a forge up there and they used to shift stuff backwards and forwards. Then in 1871 they went the next stage and converted it from a tramway into a railway. I'm just about to come upon Radda Weir. And there's a few things at the Weir, uh, as well as the Weir itself. There's uh, what was the Taffel line on the other side of the river, which is now Core Valley Lines. There was uh, a feeder from the Taff, with the sluice gates, to take water to the Timplate Works. But more importantly, there's some history relating to the tramway. Hopefully it should just be up here. There are some stone sets and yep, here we are. They've left a preserved a bit of what would have been the line, Mellon Griffiths and Penta Tramway, 1815 to 1871, complete with the stone sets that were set in. In 1896, Andrew Barclay, a locomotive manufacturer, built a stock locomotive numbered L776. It had four wheels and at 26 tonnes would have been considered quite a lightweight loco. It was sold to the Mellon Griffith Works and was given the name Firefly. It worked on the railways and around the works until 1925 when it was sold on. This image shows it in a different guise at Associated Portland Cement in their works in Dunstable. In 1967 it entered preservation and is currently under restoration at the Northampton and Lamport Railway. A link to the group's Facebook page is in the description below. As the years went on there was a need to upgrade their haulage and in 1916 the railway purchased a Bristol built Peckett saddle tank. This was much larger and more powerful than Firefly and had six wheels. It was given the name the Emerald Isle. Unlike Firefly, however, it was scrapped when the works closed in the 1950s. Another locomotive that was used on this line is this small tank loco built by Manning Wardle of Leeds. This photo was taken in 1954 by De Derek Chaplin, and my thanks to Peter Bradham for uh, permission for its use. Not a lot is known about this loco apart from the fact that it had a works number of 1936 and it was built in 1917. So if you have any information and know more about its history then please uh, leave a comment below. I'd be very interested to find out more. So back to the trail. So how do you know there was a tramway built here Bob? Well there's the maps yes there's the rail map yes there's all the other evidence but there's one more thing I want to show you. There was some pretty bad storms this year and they eroded away the track bed. So you can see that trees come down there and taking out a big chunk. If we look down here we can see 
These are sleepers. One small thing to take into account though. The taff is there and Penturk Iron and Steel Works is on the other side of the river. So somewhere it's got to be a bridge. So let's go find it. And this is what he would have come to. This is uh, the Iron Bridge. Uh, horse riders to mount. Um, and the reason it's been kept going is because of this utility pipe here. I'll wander across it and see if I can get some shots from the other side. Yeah, I make mental note to myself when filming stuff, check which way the sun's gone going. It is rather beautiful out here today with the sun shining, but I'm filming into the sun in order to get this bridge. You can get down on the bank here. Um, hopefully something's gonna come out which sure I'll show you where it went. see some of the stonework of the abutment here. Um, I believe, and I will do some digging just to double check, but I believe this is actually a replacement bridge that was built later. I don't think this is the original one. Uh, but certainly this bridge would have been where the tramway crossed and where the railway crossed. So you imagine that packet chugging over here, carrying its load. Oh look, padlock. Always with the padlocks. But you've got to admit, that's a rather nice view up there. With our own fairy castle on the side of the hill. Once the line passed over this bridge, it continued in a diagonal straight line towards the Taffel Railway, which it passed over at an angle. This Google image shows the line of the railway marked by hedges. It would have actually have gone roughly where this wall and hedge was and headed off into the distance and you might be able to make out a white building up there. Um, keep an eye on that one because uh, that will feature in a little while. So here we are north of the railway line and you can see the angle at which this road is on and this is the track bed of the railway and the tramway. As uh, get a little bit closer to these bollards you should be able to make out there's the railway and the building there as I say was the house for Penturk station which was only open a short while closed in 1863 it was replaced by Tathwell further up the line but this is where the railway would have gone diagonally straight opposite and you can see Glynis Farm in the background the crossing was protected by a signal box and was removed in the early 1960s. This photo by John Bullpin, uh, taken in about 1965, shows a couple of diesel multiple units passing where it would have been. In the background you can see the station house and also you can see the remains of the signal box. Today the Taft Trail is incredibly busy and as I've been filming, uh, I don't know how many takes I've done, I don't know how many times I've had to stop the camera and start again. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of bikes, there's a lot of runners, and it's exactly how it should have been. It's hard to think that in this idyllic setting that uh, there once was a very, very busy little tramway hauling wagons with a steam locomotive chuffing up and down here. If you want to find out more about Mellon Griffiths, the Tim Plate work, they had a really well-known brass band. If you want to find out where that feeder went to, 
There's a YouTube channel called Once Upon a Time in Whitchurch and Landaff North. And uh, I've put the link down there in the description. Uh, take a look. There are so many fantastic small short videos on there. And uh, you'll disappear down a rabbit hole, I guarantee you. So I will be wandering around soon, getting back out there now the sun is shining. Um, and until next time, I'll see you soon.